Hello everyone, my name is Apollo and I'm an animation student at a school called Sheridan College. I got in a year ago and as soon as I did I wanted to make a video about my portfolio, like a sort of Q&A advice type thing, but life got in the way. Well, thanks to the coronavirus that isn't really an issue anymore, so I thought I'd do a Q&A about art university and my art in general now that I have a year's experience of studying here. And since this is an art channel after all, you guys get to watch me draw a little layout assignment as well. So without further ado, let's answer some questions. Also, just as a quick side note, my headphones actually broke just as I started recording. So if there's any background noise, especially because I'm using my phone since I'm not decided on mics yet, and the weather decided to be extremely windy today, I'm very sorry and I hope to get it sorted out by the next video. Enjoy! Let's start with these two because they kind of go hand in hand. Alex asks, what makes Sheridan my dream school? And Midnight Phoenix asks, when did I decide to go there? My approach to finding a school I wanted to go to was quite industrial. So I looked on a bunch of ranking websites, I figured out which animation schools are the best and multiple criteria like student satisfaction, student life, the professors that taught there, um, and applied to those. 16 year old me sure did a lot of research. Sheridan came up in conversation when I was 17 or so and starting to realise that maybe schools in the UK wouldn't get me into the industry. And for the first time I considered studying abroad. The Animation Career Review rankings for 2018 came out and I saw Sheridan in the very top and I was like, oh god, I gotta go there. America is way too expensive. Seriously, I could rant on and on about CalArts and elitism. England is too far from industry and most European schools teach in their country's first language, so Canada it was. In the end, uni for me is about making connections and getting my skills on par with industry standard, which basically means this side of the pond is my best bet. But getting into Sheridan as an international is hard, mainly because the minimum score required to get in for an international student is higher than for a domestic student. In 2019, for example, the domestic cutoff was 84% and the international cutoff was 89%. My portfolio scored a 91, so I got an offer. A lot of people don't get in first try though, so I covered my bases by applying to a bunch of schools in the UK and a few abroad that taught in English or French. But Sheridan was always my first choice. On that note, a little bit about the school itself. Sheridan is a college located in Canada. There's a few campuses, but the animation one is in Oakville, Ontario. It's not a university, it's a college. They're different things in Canada compared to the USA or the UK. They all mean different things in each of these different countries. But its animation degree is really well known in industry, even if the school itself is literally just a community college. So when you're looking for schools, check for the programs ranking as well as the school itself. For instance, Oxford in the UK has an art course, but just because it's the best in the country for academia doesn't mean the art course is any good. Likewise, Sheridan is unheard of in academic circles, but when it comes to animation, it's real good. Next up, Space Kiddo Scribbles asks, what do people want to see in a portfolio? And Fruit Loop asks, did they give you any specific portfolio requirements or projects? Sheridan's portfolio requirements are some of the most specific I have ever seen in an art school. I've applied to five in the UK, then a Danish one called the Animation Workshop, and I've looked at the application process for a lot of US ones before ultimately deciding that it's too expensive. Um, and both me and my parents would end up in crippling debt, and it really wasn't worth it. Compared to every other school I've seen, Sheridan portfolio guidelines leave no room for error. By that I mean every task is outlined very specifically since, as well as your actual work, Sheridan assesses your ability to follow a brief, which is super important in industry. The requirements change a tiny bit every year, but have largely stayed the same, except for when they introduced an animation component a year ago. Most schools give a very loose indication of what to submit, so the UK universities I applied for asked for about 20 pieces of my best work, and they recommend including life drawing, a character design, maybe perspective in there, but none of it had to follow a specific format. Sheridan, on the other hand, divides the portfolio into sections and makes it very clear how much and in what style to submit. I'm gonna run through them very quickly uh, if you're interested in Sheridan in particular. So the 2019 portfolio had to include four figure drawings, two hand drawings performing an action, one character rotation, one short animation of an object, a storyboard using the character that Sheridan gives you, two perspective line drawings, and five pieces of your best personal work, which can be anything. It doesn't ask for a personal statement or anything, there isn't even an interview, they judge you based on your work and your work alone, which can be both a good thing and a bad thing. If you're applying to schools that aren't Sheridan, please 
check if they want a personal statement or an interview or even an introductory video like CalArts because every school is a little different in that respect and so many people get disqualified because they make really stupid mistakes in application or think some of the components are optional or don't follow the naming conventions or submit files in the wrong format. Don't be those people. It's honestly a lot. And I don't know how I did it. I was burnt out for the longest time afterwards. It was a terrifying process, but because Sheridan is such a hyped up school, there was a Facebook group dedicated for critiquing each other. There were Discord servers, stuff like that. I recommend joining those because they really are a great help. Often current students like me lurk on them as well and feedback from an existing student who's been through it, especially for free, is kind of the best thing you can ask for. A few people have asked about time management, how long the whole thing takes, how long each individual piece takes, and I'll do my best to sum all of that up. I've been working on this for a while. In October, I went on a two-month course with the Animation Portfolio Workshop in Toronto. I will link their website below since they were amazing. I was actually in a fire in the summer of 2018 and lost tons of time to work on my portfolio and tons of little things I'd started doing, but APW caught me up really fast and was pretty much my saving grace. It's where most of my life drawings came from, actually. So technically, from late October to the submission deadline in February, my life was dedicated to this damn portfolio. It's hard to say, though, because when you aren't directly making the portfolio work, you can still be enhancing skills for each section. I went to life drawing every day for two months as part of APW, and only by the end did I have two long poses and two short poses that I liked. For most of these, you don't just, you know, sit down and make something in an hour and submit it, unless you're really good. You'll be drafting and redrafting and asking for critique and making more versions, and right up until the deadline, it never really ends. The hand drawings took me 20 minutes each to do, but that was after hours of practice and reference photos and underdrawings and things like that. My advice is start observational drawing as early as possible, so go to the zoo and draw animals, sit in a cafe and practice two-point perspective, find a local life drawing session. You'll need all of those skills because the people marking it will be looking out for very specific criteria. As for motivation and balancing your life and high school with your portfolio, I honestly don't know because I barely remember any of it. I think I repressed it. My mental health suffered definitely as a result, as did my social life, sleep schedule, honestly everything. This is not easy, but it's also not forever. Once it's done, you can get your life back. I definitely made a few sacrifices during portfolio season. I quit my job for about three months. I fell behind on high school. I'm not saying it has to be like that, but prioritization is important. Maybe go out and party less, maybe settle for a B instead of an A in that one class because you didn't study as much as you should have. God, I feel terrible asking you guys to do worse in high school. Even once you're in art school, you're going to have to fudge some assignments in order to really excel in the ones more relevant to you and your career path because you don't just, you just don't have time to polish every single one. There's a fourth year I know who nearly failed her 3D course because she was spending every waking moment on her internship portfolio, but guess what? She interned at Disney that summer. Please prioritize. There are wind chimes in this neighborhood. I don't know where they are, but they won't shut up. So I'm sorry if there's twangy sounds in the background of the video. Kobonobo asks, which part of the portfolio is most important? Storyboard probably? While it's true that the storyboard part of this portfolio is worth a whole 25% of the thing, I think you should prioritize what you're weakest at. For example, I've tutored some fantastic character designers who have a strong grasp of cartooning, but have never done a life drawing in their life, and it pulled their marks down immensely. I'll tell you the truth, none of us have any clue how the storyboard portion is marked, and a lot of us think it's super unfair, but that's how it is, so my advice would be to polish every other section until it's perfect. I scored an 18 out of 25 on my storyboard, and if every other section of my portfolio hadn't gotten full marks, I would not be in this school. Don't bank on the storyboard, make sure everything else is as good as you can get it. On that note, Psyche asks, do I know why my storyboard got less marks? And honestly, yes and no. Storyboard is the one component I'm still confused on. I've seen amazing ones get rejected. I've seen mediocre ones get 20 out of 25. My own lacked angle variation and the character was off model, but some of the other ones, I've no idea. My best advice would be to have distinct camera angles and varied shots, so up shots, down shots, close ups, long shots, not spend too much time on the background and keep the character on model. 
For those who aren't familiar with Sheridan's portfolio, for the storyboard section they give you a character that they have designed, and your job is to make a storyboard with that character in it. Keeping a character on model basically means they look like the turnaround that Sheridan provides from all angles and in all panels. It's easy to forget and deviate from it or shorthand your character, but it's super important. Keep them on model and keep the action clear. Aspelax asks, what personal art did I submit and did I format it differently? Both Sheridan and animation schools that have slightly more liberal requirements want variety. They want to see that there are multiple areas of art that you are passionate about and that you're willing to experiment. What they don't want to see is five personal pieces of the same character in the same style. So I submitted a page of sketches, a watercolour painting, a PDF of my best sketchbook work, a realistic portrait and a caricature, like on one page, and a series of action poses. Also, I advise strongly against putting recognisable fan art in your personal section, but the keyword here, again, is recognisable. I, for example, had multiple critical role and adventure zone characters in my pieces. I think Snufkin from the Moomins appeared in my watercolour painting, but since they have no exact canon appearance and aren't exactly mainstream, I took liberties and made them stand out and look unique. A friend of mine actually put in Yuri on Ice fan art, but since it was a different AU and drawn in her very non-anime style, the characters just look like any given Japanese family. So you got accepted. What next? Miles asks, what was it like to move away from home? And Waterflowers adds that moving away from family is the only thing that's stopping them from applying. What was it like for me? I'll be honest, being near my family wasn't at all a factor in my decision, and I might sound kind of calloused, but I didn't really care. My situation is kind of unique because the only person who hasn't disowned me yet <laughs> from my very Russian family is my mum, who I live with in the UK. And I was set on moving away from her already, so why not to another country that will give me better career prospects? Before coming here, I've already moved twice, from one side of Russia to the other when I was two, and from Russia to the UK when I was nine. And I think I'm kind of used to changing up where I live at this point, and I'm so busy that I don't even really have time to miss people. My point of view is that you can't stay with your family forever, so do what makes sense for your career path. I'd never bust up an opportunity just because it's far away from me, I'd pack my bags and go. If you have their support, it'll be like you never left. They'll visit, you'll visit, you guys will call a lot, and if you don't, I doubt they were worth sticking around for in the first place. I'm lucky that I have the full support of my mum, she's actually come to Canada once for a weekend, made me dumplings and left, and we're still very much in touch. On the note of being an immigrant and taking all of your jobs, <laughs> TapWaterX asks what I did to make up my Canada tests, which I'm assuming means the high school requirements for Sheridan. And that one's easy. Sheridan has different requirements for every country. I just graduated high school here in the UK, submitted my A-level exam results, and that was that. Since England's first language is, duh, English, I didn't have to take a language proficiency test, but sometimes that's required too. One particular problem I ran into is the deadlines for result submission. Apparently in Canada you get your GPA back in May, so that was when we had to submit ours by. But I had one small issue. In the UK, exams don't end till June and your results don't come out till August. As for certificates, they're only printed in November. I've never seen a school with a competent admissions team, but Sheridan tops them all. They just wouldn't believe me. They demanded the results then and there, and they took signed letters from my headmaster and my tutor, as well as a call to the exam board to prove that no, I can't give you the results in May. I think Sheridan's never had an accepted applicant from the UK that's straight out of high school because UK standards for art courses are extremely low, and unless you do a bunch of extra prep like I did, you're screwed. So they had no idea our system worked like that. They were actually kind of rude to me, they said they wouldn't believe me, and they said all of these other things, they threatened me with expulsion unless I provide them the exam results by a certain date, but it all got worked out in the end because there's nothing they can do, that's how the official exam board works. So again, to reiterate, call your uni, make sure your results are sorted, I'm sure there's a way around whatever requirements they're offering. Two questions from Livia B. Art here. What type of experience is best and whether maths classes are required? I don't know how it works anywhere else, but in the UK maths is not required to study after the age of 16. We're very lucky that way. I dropped it as soon as I could and I'm doing pretty okay. Double check the requirements for your own country though. As for experience, high school did very little for me since art classes in the UK aren't usually very useful at all. I do have my school's graphic design department to thank for actually being competent and teaching us the whole of the Adobe suite though. Not very common when it comes to the arts in England. 
Up to the time I took APW, I was self-taught using courses online and DeviantArt tutorials to improve. There is tons of stuff out there, and as long as you're good enough by the time portfolio season comes up, it doesn't matter what you used to get there. Over the summer, I found a life drawing meetup group run by an animation graduate. We'd have fun, we'd go to the pub after, it was great for my improvement. Some people go to art high schools, which they have in this country, Canada. Some people have already been in industry or did another degree, but came back because Sheridan's reputation was something that appealed to them. I have classmates aged 30 and over. There's no one path to get accepted. Jimmy Drawing asks, is competition between students really that big of a thing? And this other person whose username is too long to fit in the box asks, what's the biggest misconception I had before starting? The answer to those is kind of one and the same, because the biggest misconception, or I guess worry, I had was that everyone would be really hostile and competitive and I wouldn't make any friends and the second years would look down on us and it's full of these professionals. How does little old me fit in? Well, fear not, small first year. All of that could not be further from the truth. The amount of support between your peers is overwhelming. Everyone's full of imposter syndrome and ramen and we're all in this together. I feel like I've been pulled into a family of 150 students and everyone wants each other to succeed. The thing is, this is a tiny industry and the friends you make are likely to get you into jobs by recommendation and you are equally likely to do the same for them. Hostile people that think too highly of themselves and act like they're above you will only get so far in this field because it doesn't matter how good your skills are if you're known as that one person that's really hard to work with. Word will spread and that will be that. Trenta Hibiscus asks, what does a regular daily schedule look like for me? In first year, we take animation, storytelling, digital tools, painting, layout, character design, and life drawing, as well as an animation history lecture in second semester and two electives, English and one of your choice in second semester. Elective selection is always a mess. The site crashes, the Wi-Fi dies, but this time around I was lucky and ended up with a course about sci-fi. You'd usually have two or three two-hour classes a day. The earliest they start is 8 a.m. and the latest they go to is like 9 p.m. This means some days you'll be in school from 8 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon, others your earliest class is 4pm and you get out way past 10 because you stayed in the labs to work after. Labs are open 24-7, so it's not too odd to see students working away on assignments at 3 in the morning. There's also extra life drawing every evening and weekend, which I wish I went to more, but I work evenings to afford to live here so I rarely make it. The class I love best is layout. The professor knows his stuff and has us do in-class exercises on top of homework and I think I've learnt the most in that one since I went from hating backgrounds with a passion to being able to draw complex environments in just four months. Speaking of working part-time, people tell you not to do it because the program really is demanding and I agree. In high school I worked 16 hours a week on top of my studies and posted on Instagram daily and it was fine. So I thought, no big deal, right? Wrong. You miss out on so much, you get behind on classwork, it's kind of isolated me a lot this year and I regret not being with my friends. I feel like they've all forgotten me. I can't really afford to not work, but my advice is to maybe save up over the summer and not strain yourself too much in the academic year. 16 hours a week while studying full time was a lot, and the time I could have had making actual lasting connections with my peers isn't time I'll get back. The classwork you do in a week is the equivalent of one full Sheridan portfolio, so you can imagine how stressful it can be if you don't stay on top of it asked if it was worth it, who I'd recommend it to, etc. I'd say if you can afford art school, go to a good one. Being self-taught isn't any worse in terms of your skill set, but having access to professionals willing to critique you, a community of peers you might very well be working alongside in a few years time, and software available to you 24-7 is a huge privilege and advantage. If you're in the USA, I think going abroad might give you a better chance of staying out of student debt too, since Sheridan's international tuition per year is less than half of what you pay for a school like CalArts or SVA, and the UK and Europe are even cheaper. But at the same time, don't go to an art school for the sake of going to an art school. Mediocre schools with non-existent connections will take your money and leave you with absolutely nothing useful to industry. Is it true that everyone in here is queer or non-binary? Yes, we are all immigrant homosexuals and we will steal all of your job. No, of course, I'm kidding. The animation cohort is the most diverse group of people I have ever seen. Everyone has a different story and life experience to tell. It's honestly amazing to listen to all of them sometimes. I'm smiling just talking about them, you guys. <laughs> of course, there are queer people that go to the school, but obviously it isn't limited to just that. What there is none of here, however, is bigotry. 
The industry is full of big names who are members of the LGBT community. Names like Rebecca Sugar, Noelle Stevenson, Lake Farmer, Kate Moros, I could go on and on, but there is no place for you in this field if you aren't prepared to work with, on a professional level, with LGBT people. Again, it's a small industry and your bigotry could cost you an opportunity. People here respect me, they respect my pronouns, and even if they secretly think I'm making it all up for attention, they keep that to themselves. Right, that about wraps it up. I'll link my Sheridan portfolio below. I covered a lot of ground today, and I hope you all found it useful. And I'm sorry if I didn't get to answer everyone's questions. I'd love to do a part two that dispels some more of the misconceptions people have about art school, so give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Did I put anyone off of art school completely? If you want more of my beautiful British accent, subscribe and follow me on Insta, Tumblr and Twitter. And if you really like what I'm doing, consider joining my Patreon, where I post a bunch of extra speed paints, sketchbooks and more. As a patron, you also get to be on this cool end screen. So have a great rest of your day, and thanks to my existing patrons.